action shots are such a fun way to add storytelling to your food photography, but they do require a little bit more patience and skills than a normal food photograph. So today's video will cover my best tips to nail action shots such as this, this, and this when it comes to your food photography. Hey everyone, my name is Sukena and on this channel we talk all about how to take stunning food photos and make lots and lots and lots of money in your food photography business. Now action shots are a great way to show off your skills as a food photographer, evoke emotions, tell a unique story and basically just stand out as a food photographer. So today I'm going to be sharing five tips with you to make the process of taking action shots faster, easier, as well as more successful. And just so we're on the same page when it comes to action shots, examples of action in food photography images would include things like pouring, drizzling, and mixing. So you get my drift now. Okay, let's jump straight into those tips. So my first tip when it comes to nailing action shots is to make sure that you're using a tripod. Does that mean that without a tripod, you can't do action shots? Nope. But tripods make it much easier, much faster, and here's why. When it comes to food photography, the likelihood is there will be a lot of times when you're working on set alone and you don't have a huge team of stylists or assistants to support you. And if that's the case, then it's gonna be impossible for you to be in front of the camera doing the action, such as the pouring and the drizzling, as well as being behind the camera and actually taking the shot. So if you're a one woman or a one man band, then having a tripod is an absolute necessity when it comes to taking these action shots. Another reason for having a tripod is that depending on the type of movement you want to capture, a tripod might be necessary. So here's an example of what I mean. In this shot, the action here is the movement of the hand and you can tell that it's moving because it's blurred out. And that blurring is very intentional to indicate movement. But as you can see, everything else in the shot is perfectly shot. Now, in order to capture an image like this, where parts of the image have intentional blur and parts of the image are completely sharp, a tripod is an absolute necessity. Now, there are a ton of reasons why you should be on a tripod when shooting food photos, besides action shots. And I'm not gonna go over these, but hopefully these two reasons should be enough for you to jump onto your tripod or purchase one if you don't have one already. Because that really is one of the keys to nailing those action shots. Okay, let's move on to tip number two, and that's to familiarize yourself with the way shutter speed works in relation to movement especially if you're using natural light. Now it's actually shutter speed that's in control of any movement, whether that's intentional or not intentional when it comes to your food photos and natural light. So depending on whether you want to freeze movement, like in this image over here, or you want to blur the movement like the previous shot, you need to know how shutter speed works in order to do that. So take some time to familiarize yourself with shooting in manual mode and being very comfortable with how changes in shutter speed will actually affect the movement in your images. So that was a really short and sweet tip, but a really important one as well. So the next tip I have for you when capturing motion is to ensure that you have extra food or drink when you're shooting. And here's the reason why. Even if you are technically very adept, you know exactly how to use your camera inside out, oftentimes with action photography, it's gonna take a few goes before you actually nail that money shot. So you'll find that you need to repeat the action several times. So here's an example of me sifting sugar on French toast. Now, the first time we attempted this, the amount of sugar coming out of the sieve was far too much, and we weren't able to get that perfect drizzle in time before the French toast was completely covered in sugar, like this image over here. So we needed to attempt this image again in order to get that final money shot. Now, if we didn't have a second batch of French toast already prepared, this would not have been possible. So that's why you always need to have extra food, drink, and props on set when you're attempting these action shots. Okay, so my next tip now has to do with focus. And if you're multitasking or have another tab open, I want you to come back to this video and listen really carefully because this tip can really make or break your image. 
Now, there's two ways you can actually focus when you're doing an action shot or two places where you can focus. You can lock your focus on a part of the image that's not moving. And that way you don't really need to worry about the focus changing whilst you're attempting this movement in your images. Or the second way would be to actually focus on the actual action that's happening. So to explain this a little bit further, let's look at this shot of Vietnamese coffee. Now, if I use technique number one, which is to focus on a part of the image that's not moving, then I would need to focus on something, say, like the front of this glass as an example. And when I do this, I can actually lock the focus and I don't need to worry about it. On the other hand, if I wanted to focus on the actual pour, the actual movement of the milk, I now need to focus on the pour. But the problem is that the pouring part of the image is constantly changing and moving. So now you need to make sure that before you take the image, you decide where exactly you want that focus to be and what focusing technique you need to use in order to ensure that that core is perfectly sharp and in focus. So bear your focusing technique and where you focus when you're taking action shots. Okay, now before I move on to tip number five, capturing movement is probably like less than 1% of taking beautiful food photos and also monetizing your photography. So if you want to learn even more tips about how you can take stunning photos using a proven system and then take those photos and then turn it into a thriving and sustainable business that's actually making money rather than just accepting free product, then make sure you download my free guide on how to get noticed and get paid as a successful food photographer. It's completely free and it gives you all the details about a special framework I and hundreds of my students use to not only take stunning photos, but also make money. So I'm sharing the framework as well as some free tips inside this guide. I've linked it in the description box as well as the first comment under the video. Okay, let's move on to the last tip I have for you, which is a small but mighty tip, and that is to think about your background colors in relation to the color of the ingredients that you're actually using. Now, I actually talk about backgrounds a lot more in this video here, so you can actually watch that later on if you want. But let me explain a little bit more about what I mean when you're being mindful about the color of the background in relation to ingredients in an action shot. Now, whenever I think of photographing an action shot, beforehand, I'm very strategic about the color of the background that I'm going to use. So going back to this image here of the Vietnamese coffee, the color of the milk or the thing that's moving is white. And in order to be able to see the pour, I've strategically used a darker background so that the white of the milk actually shows up against that darker background. Now, had I used a lighter background, such as a white background or perhaps even a beige one, the milk wouldn't have stood out that well against that lighter background. Let's also take another example and look at that sprinkling of sugar for the French toast. Now, my ingredient that's moving here is the icing sugar, which again is white. So I want to make sure that I'm able to see this white sifted sugar against a colored background. So here I decided to use pink. Now almost any background would have worked except one which is too light perhaps, such as a white or again a beige or even a yellow. So you just need to make sure that whatever ingredient is moving, you can create contrast between that ingredient and the color of the background in order for it to show up. Now, I'd love for you to jump into the comment section and tell me what tip you found most helpful from today's video. Have you ever taken any action shots? Is this something that you've struggled with in the past? Make sure you jump into the comment box, tell me all, and if you don't have anything else to comment, comment me a banana. Now, if you've enjoyed today's video, I'm very active on Instagram and I'm always dropping gems, tips, tutorials on my feed, on my reels, as well as on my stories. So make sure you're following Learn Food over there. I'll also be back next week with a new video all about food photography. But in the meantime, you can also check out these two videos that I did in the past that your fellow food photographers have loved. So just click on the thumbnails and you can check them out as well. Have a great rest of the week and I'll catch you same place, same time next week.